The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Welcome everyone to our daily doctrinal Bible study of the Vic Malbido Evangelistic Ministry. Welcome once again our subscribers, our fellow believers, and uh, those who are listening to our Bible study today. Welcome everyone. <clears throat> we will continue our study on the mental attitude dynamics. First of all, yesterday we said that, and uh, in the past lessons we said that emotion being part of uh, our faculty is uh, not supposed to rule our life, most especially to us believers, because emotion, as we have already learned, has no thinking. It has no capacity to think. Therefore, we have to <clears throat> remind ourselves that once emotion rules our life, we are in trouble in our spiritual life. So if in case emotions come to work in a believer's life, meaning emotions are ruling his life, then thinking is being set aside. And when this happens to the believer's life, he is allowing himself to be vulnerable to the devil's cunning scheme to be victimized by the deceitful goal of the devil, preventing that believer from using his mental attitude with the utilization of Bible doctrine that's circulating in the stream of his consciousness. The doctrine that's in this believer's frontal lobe of the mentality of his soul, this time, <clears throat> is being short-circuited. It is short-circuited by the ruling feeling or emotion that's taking hold of his life. That, of course, is this believer's choice. Nobody, not even God, can prevent him from making that choice, right? Now, he becomes a product of his decision. And here comes the law of volitional responsibility to work on this emotion-run believer. While on the other hand, here comes a believer who is filled with the Holy Spirit, residing <coughs> in the operational divine atmosphere, fulfilling the protocol plan of God, functioning with Bible doctrine, using the divine viewpoint thinking that he pulls from the frontal lobe of the mentality of his soul, putting aside his emotions in facing any kind of pressure in life. He is the kind of believer that's a winner. And do you know why? Besides he's filled with the Holy Spirit, he's likewise filled with the divine viewpoint mental attitude. You see? He is the kind of believer that God is looking for. Why? Because he is on God's side, not on man's side. He is simply doing things as unto the Lord. Furthermore, <clears throat> this kind of believer is usable by God being part of a pivot of the land. You see, when we believers just come to our right senses and rightfully function the way God wills us to, to follow His perfect protocol plan, 
in our phase two life and obey God's mandate in 2 Peter 3.18 to let us grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and eventually attain our common goal which is spiritual maturity otherwise called the capacity stage then we are definitely living the divine viewpoint lifestyle utilizing God's grace provision of his divine assets that is the grace method to glorify God to the max now <clears throat> let us be reminded by the way that God looks at what is inside not at what is outside of man and of course he perfectly knows and sees what's inside of us and his judgment on what we have inside of us is perfect why because like i just said god is perfect justice so his judgment is perfect now please understand here that what we're talking about are god's perfect attributes which are basic subjects that every believer is supposed to have absorbed in his spiritual life. Do you know what? Your mental attitude motivates and influences your behavior. Do you agree? But what's this? One's behavior is not 100% motivated and influenced by your mental attitude. Okay? So we can say that the behavior of a person is not necessarily caused by what he has in his mind. Why? Again, because as what I just said, one's behavior is not 100% motivated and influenced by his mental attitude. Now, do you know what I mean? Now, here is an example. Suppose you happen to meet somebody, maybe one of your acquaintances, and he throws a smile on you. Now my question is, are you 100% sure that the smile he gives you really reflects what's inside his mind? Otherwise he actually does not mean it. That's what we're trying to emphasize here. So we can say that only God and there's absolutely no one else who knows what really is the true mental attitude of a person? Again, it's only God who knows and knows perfectly. Okay? Now, divine viewpoint is important. Divine viewpoint, as we know, is a byproduct of a believer's consistent and persistent intake of Bible doc or Bible doctrine. And as he meaning any believer who is spiritually advancing, as he moves on in his unique spiritual life inside the protocol plan of God, he lives his life pleasing to the Lord. Automatically, the divine viewpoint, God's thinking, 1 Corinthians 2.16, is now circulating in the stream of his consciousness. That believer belongs to the higher echelon of winner believers in the Pleroma stage. So let's go back to what we said a while ago that emotion and thinking cannot go together. Now can you cite an example for this? Well, okay. When you get angry, have you noticed you are not using your thinking? You are not thinking at the height of your anger. No, you are not thinking. Do you know that? What you are using actually at that moment of your anger is nothing but a strong feeling of displeasure and antagonism, right? And you find it hard to control your anger because you are in a violent state. Your thinking is out of the picture. You are dominated with rage. Now on the part of believers, especially believers who are carnal and reversionistic, many believers <clears throat> who 
who are negative to study God's Word, hence not growing in doctrine, it would be so hard for them to accept the truth that emotion and thinking cannot go together hand in hand. As we continue in our daily intake of God's Word, we're going to learn, and we already had learned, the biblical principle that says that emotion as part of human essence has nothing to do with our spiritual life. Nothing. Emotion has no spiritual validity in our unique spiritual life. Thus, we as believers in Christ stand strong in the biblical principle that maintains that the Christian way of life is a mental attitude life. Well, of course, we are not against the use of our human emotion. Don't get me wrong. Emotion, as we know, has been given to us by God, and we are to use it. But we are not supposed to be ruled and controlled by it. You see, doctrine taught us how God designed our human faculties to function. The doctrinal principle that we learn is this. The function or role of our emotion is that of a responder, while the role of our mental attitude is that of an initiator. To invert its role is a distortion of the truth and please understand that. That's a distortion of the truth. We are going to continue this study tomorrow. So don't forget to be with us.